battle scenes can be one of the most exciting and memorable parts of a story, but only if they're done well. Stick around because today we're going to talk about how to write the most effective battle scenes. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm a writer, I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. Today we're going to talk about battle scenes, and I want to say right up front that battle scenes are different from fight scenes. The main difference here is that when you have a battle scene, you have two groups or armies clashing with one another. On the other hand, when you have a fight scene, usually you have an individual fighting against another individual or maybe a group of people. Now that we got that out of the way, I want to give you some quick tips on things that you absolutely must remember when you are writing battle scenes. And I also have a six-step method for writing battle scenes that I'm going to get to later on in the video. But let's get some basic tips out of the way first. And the first tip I want to give you is that battle scenes should be visual. And this might sound like obvious advice, but a lot of writers, especially novel writers, will make the mistake of spending too much time inside their characters' heads. And this just doesn't work because when there's a battle going on, the stakes should be life and death. It should be danger around every corner, and your characters should not be sitting there dwelling on things. So in Instead of focusing on the internal thoughts of a character, you need to focus on the external. You need to give us some visual details as well as hitting on the other four senses when you can. Second tip, you want your battles to be fast paced, at least compared to the rest of your story. This is no time to get poetic with your language. This is no time to dump a bunch of flowery paragraphs on your audience. Instead, you want to keep things clear and to the point. You want your characters acting back and forth, action, reaction, punch, counter punch, keep things moving quickly. Third tip is that your battle scene may actually involve multiple scenes. That's totally fine. You don't have to stretch out one large battle scene. Instead, you can have multiple scenes populating the actual battle, and this can help with the pacing of the scene. It can also make things more interesting as you're having the back and forth. And then my fourth tip is that your battle should have a significant impact on your story. This is so critical. If you have a large-scale battle in your story, then the result of that battle should be a major change. For instance, if before the battle things are looking grim for your heroes and it looks like it's a do or die situation, life or death, then after that battle they should either be victorious and celebrating their massive victory or they should be completely wiped out. There is no in between. A battle should have some kind of major change as a result and there is no way around it. Now I want to go over my six simple steps for writing an effective battle scene. If you follow these six steps, they will help you, they will give you a guideline for writing battles and making sure that they work within the context of your stories. Now the first step is the plan. And this is where you wanna show your characters strategizing and deciding what they're going to do during the battle. How do they plan on winning? And you should define their goals, not just for the characters themselves, but you should be defining their goals so that the audience can follow your battle. Because if you just throw a bunch of characters into a battle and they're all just, you know, chopping away at each other with swords or firing away with guns, then what is the audience supposed to root for? You need to define the goals. What are they trying to accomplish? Are they trying to protect a certain area? Are they trying to attack a certain area? Are they trying to capture someone? Are they trying to kill someone? Are they trying to act as a decoy? There are a lot of possibilities, but you need to stress what the plan is so that the audience can follow the actual story of your battle. Now, the second step is the approach. And this is where you have the two groups enter into battle. You might have the two groups approaching one another, or you might have a scenario where one group is approaching another group that is taking a defensive stance. Either way is fine. It's going to depend on what type of story you're writing. But the important thing here is that this is where the, the combat actually begins. And right before it begins, Ends, you want to have your groups sizing each other up. Maybe they're staring off at the, at the army approaching them from the distance, or maybe they're looking up at the castle that they're trying to attack, whatever it may be. And right here is where you want to start showing the first burst of combat. Sometimes you'll have your heroes getting off to a good start. Other times you'll have your heroes getting their asses kicked from the start. Either way is fine, but you do want to set the tone early on in the battle. Is this going to be something where the heroes have a fighting chance, or is this going to be a, a steady uphill climb? Is this going to be a huge challenge for them to overcome? The the third step is a reminder of the stakes, and this is so important. A lot of writers forget about this, but if you just have people running around the battlefield killing each other, that's not enough. You need to remind us what is at stake
like if your heroes lose. And one of the best ways to do this is by showing us who could die as a result of losing this battle. One great example of this would be from the Death Star battle in Star Wars. You have Luke flying around with the other rebel pilots. They're trying to blow up the Death Star. Meanwhile, every now and then you cut back to Leia and the other rebels back at the base. You show them being afraid. You show them worrying about what can happen if the Death Star manages to get in firing range. Another example would be from Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, the Battle of Helm's Deep. During this battle, we are constantly shown the women and children who could die if Aragorn and his group fail to hold off the orcs. So always remember, you want to personalize the battle, you want to add some emotional impact to it, and you want to remind us what can be lost if the heroes fail. Step four is setbacks, and these are critical, especially if your heroes are having success early on in the battle. You need to turn the tide every now and then, you need to have your villains fighting back, and you need to throw those counter punches. You need to show your heroes sustaining losses, maybe even a notable character dies, and you need to show us a situation where it seems like defeat is realistic. Maybe your heroes aren't actually gonna win this battle after all. You might even throw in a betrayal here to really shake your heroes to their core. Step five is the epic rally, and this is where your heroes find a last minute weakness or some other solution that gets them back in the battle. After facing a lot of setbacks, all of a sudden they need to get back on track and they find a way to do it and then they get into that epic rally. Maybe they even get support from allies that they didn't expect would be coming. Whatever it is, they get back in the battle and they set up for the finale and step six is the climax. And this is where the battle is decided by a character moment. Even though a battle is this large scale thing, you want to have your characters fighting back and forth on the individual level toward the end. You want to have your main character making a choice, usually a choice to overcome a flaw in order to defeat the villain and give their army or their group victory. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, do you have a battle scene planned for your current work in progress? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.